Okay, Hurricane Ida has definitely dropped her water all over us. She came up from New Orleans, as you guys probably know. It's been raining a couple days here, and as you can see, we are pretty flooded. We're not nearly as bad as a lot of people, though. <clears throat> so many places got devastated over the past month from flooding here in Tennessee, so we're pretty lucky that we're at least elevated enough that it doesn't get into our house. My wheelbarrow for carrying Sheldon around. I keep it here by his pen because he gets out a lot and it's full of water. Okay guys, Hurricane Ida has hit and it's been raining for a couple days. And we already had flooding here in Tennessee, so this extra rain is pretty crazy. So we're heading out to the steel yard right now and I'm gonna take Cooper with me and I'm gonna take you guys along in this crazy rain. Ready to go, Poopy? I'm going on a little wet trip. Okay, we are here. We're here at the steel yard. It's kind of a crazy place. I have to come here a couple times a week to get supplies. Staying dry? Haha. Uh -huh. Best I can. <laughs> I've been failing at it. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Hurricane's here. Yeah, the hurricane is on us. We get one in there. We're... Yeah, the one kind of helped the rest. We're going. Thanks, Daryl. Absolutely. Have a good day. Gotta be safe with switches. <laughs> see you later. All right, we'll see you next week. Wait a minute, this one, this one. It is the day after Ida rolled through and a lot of spots are flooded. Our creek is pretty full. Cool. Get that ball. Get it, Wade. Get it. Good job, Wade. Yay, Wade. Good job, Tater. Get into a tumble. Waves that shake me out. Get it. Out of my skin Never been so easy Losing my direction tape. My bearings have me south of home Who rolled in turtle poop? I've been wrong before I was waiting in the undertow and a trip to fed away like bold Unaware of where my heart would go I was waiting in the undertow Gentle, gentle And the water feels Like a friend oh. I've not seen Like another who lost her tongue. 
What you doing? Are you in the turtle pool? All right, Miss Layla and I, Miss Layla, I should say, Miss Layla and I are getting ready to get in the golf cart and go check on our little magical camping spot back in the woods. <laughs> it's starting to rain. If you guys haven't checked it out, you might want to check out our video. I think it's episode 10. It's called Magical Camping. It, I set up a tent back in the woods. Took the dogs camping one night and just had a really fun time doing that. So check out that video. It's got a lot of fun stuff in it. And it also shows kind of how I set it up back in the So I'm having a bit of a chicken quandary or issue, I guess, if you will. I mean, what's new? Every single day of having chickens, there's something that's going to go wrong. Now I have Sue, who's my little black bantam, and she has not been getting off her nest. She has been sitting on the nest for several days. Here's all the eggs in the nest. She's finally off, though. This is the first time she's been off of her nest in about four days. Sue finally got off the nest though to eat, which is good, I'm happy to see. So she was part of the wild chicken bunch and her wing, uh, she got it, she lost her wing with a predator. And she decided to just move in with all the hens, uh, my domestic hens. So she lives inside now, but at night she's not going up. She won't go in the coop at night. And I'm worried about her because she only has the one wing. I've been really scared for her to be out at night and not be locked up, but she did it. She's been on the nest for about four days. She's finally off tonight. Hopefully maybe I can lock her up tonight, but I'm gonna think she's probably gonna wanna sit on the nest. So in the next couple days, I'm gonna move my guineas out of the pen with the Polish chickens. And I'm gonna move them into this cool new coop I have. They're just way too aggressive and wild for those little Polish chicks. And I think they're kind of overrunning them a little bit now and getting too much food. So I'm gonna separate them out and that ought to be wild because those guineas are crazy. But check this out. How adorable are these cute little Polish chickens? Seriously, look at their little, they've got little mohawks. All right, so here is some video from about a week ago of these chicks. And here they are today, which is Saturday, uh, the Saturday of Labor Day weekend. So they've grown a lot in about a week and the guineas have really grown.
Hey guys, this week I thought it'd be fun to show you how to make a truly authentic Italian bolognese. My normal pasta sauce is not an authentic Italian bolognese, but something that I just sort of have concocted over the years. I've just had the desire to start making a real authentic Italian bolognese. So I got a recipe from a little Italian grandma named Gina. She does the real true authentic bolognese. Absolutely delicious with fresh homemade pasta as well, which definitely takes it up a notch or three. Pick your favorite stock pot, pasta pot, whatever you usually use. You're gonna need a bigger pot, so start heating that. Put in, you know, three, four tablespoons of olive oil, whatever you need to sort of coat the bottom of your pot to look a lot like mine looks right now. We are going to add in probably about a cup of diced or chopped onions. It really doesn't matter. It's just really to taste. We're going to cook these onions until they become tender and start to become more translucent. You want them to soften a bit before we go to the next step, which is putting in about a cup of chopped carrots and a cup of celery. And so normally when you mix the onions, carrots, and celery, they call that the trinity. And it's the trinity of the aromatics. And these aromatics are a base for so many sauces. I mean, throughout cooking, it's onions, carrots, and celery. And again, it's called the trinity. So we're gonna soften those carrots, continue to soften the onions, and soften the celery. Then we're gonna add probably a teaspoon and a half of salt and about a tablespoon of pepper. And we're gonna continue to salt and season this dish throughout the process, but let's start there. We're gonna start light. You can always add more salt, you can't take it away. So, so let's just start by seasoning our aromatics. Let's add in about a pound and a half of Italian sausage. I tend to use a hot Italian sausage, but again, do it to your taste. Chop that up. You know, we're gonna start browning that along with the rest of the ingredients we have going. And I like to make the pieces smaller. Then we're gonna go ahead and we're going to add a ground beef. And I really like an 80-20. Um, I like a little bit of the extra fat in there, but not too much fat. So let's start chopping that up. Let's get our meat brown. And while we're browning, go ahead and, and let's just keep chopping up those pieces. We don't want big hunks of beef in our bolognese. It definitely needs to be a bit smoother and you'll see the consistency throughout my cooking process. Okay, once you've browned your meat, then feel free to give it a taste. Taste it for salt, taste your meat, see how that is picking up the different flavors, and then add salt and add some pepper if you need to. But again, we're gonna continue to add a little bit more salt later. So just taste it and do what you think you need. Okay, now it is time to add the wine. We need to add about a cup or a cup and a half of a red wine. I choose a wine that is probably, you know, $13 a bottle, $15 a bottle, something like that. Nothing super cheap, but then again, of course you don't wanna use anything too expensive. All right, now we're gonna add our tomato paste. We're gonna add two cans of tomato paste. And I really prefer to use this brand. It's an Italian brand and I and I actually ordered it online from Amazon and got it here because the flavor's amazing. Once you add that in, make sure to rinse out the cans with water and add that to the sauce as well. You don't wanna waste any of the tomato paste. Now we're gonna add a can of San Marzano style tomatoes. They're peeled and cooked. Uh, I got the Hunts brand, but honestly, there's authentic Italian brands that are better, but this is all I had on hand for, for right now. And you just wanna go ahead and just chop those up. We don't want big hunks of tomato in it. We want it to be way smoother than that. So go ahead and chop it up and then taste it again. Maybe you need to add some more salt and pepper at this point. The tomatoes going in are probably gonna call for a little more salt and a little more pepper. So do that if you need to. Again, it's all the taste. Now, I like to add in red chili flakes or crushed red pepper. This warning is not part of the original bolognese recipe. I love hot and I really love pepper flakes, so I'm adding that. Okay guys, we're gonna let this cook for quite a while. Ooh, it's got way too much liquid. We want this to reduce for a while. So throughout the day, we're gonna be cooking this for about four hours. You can see it's a lot thicker. So now we're gonna add our fresh basil and I got this basil from my little uh, herb garden pot. And we're also going to add garlic and I wanna just 
let you know that this garlic is not any original recipe and it seems weird that the Italian recipe wouldn't have garlic but she did not put garlic in hers. I do put garlic in mine because I love garlic. So again, this isn't part of the original, but I think it makes it taste better. Okay, now we are going to add one and a half to two cups of cream. And again, we're gonna really do this to taste, but you're gonna see the color that my sauce is going to turn once I combine all of the cream into the sauce and it turns a specific color that means it's the right amount of cream ratio. But for the amount of, of sauce that we have, I would say do a, a cup and a half to two cups of cream and that'll work perfectly. And we're gonna stir that up and you're gonna see this color develop like I was talking about. And that's what we want. Okay guys, now it's time to make our fresh handmade pasta. And it's really easier than what you think it would be. We're gonna use our double zero flour that I buy uh, on Amazon. It's from Italy and it's a great flour for pizza dough and for pasta and for everything else. We're also gonna use a semolina flour and we're gonna use a cup of each to get this started. I'm gonna add a pinch of salt to that as well, maybe a, you know, a teaspoon. Then we're going to whisk the two flours together, kind of get it all combined. Once we get that nicely combined, let's make a little well because we're gonna add our eggs to this well. I'm gonna do five egg yolks and two full eggs to this mixture. And what you wanna do, you wanna put it in the center and then you just wanna start combining very slowly. You don't wanna get too much of the flour into the mixture too quickly. You don't want it to be lumpy too quickly. We're just gonna continue to do this and continue to add the mixture, the egg mixture. And again, just do it slowly. Don't put too much in at a time because you don't want it running out as well. You want it to stay kind of in the, the working area. So just continually bring it all together. Pull that flour into your egg mixture. This is not going to be like a pizza dough. It's not going to be like a pie dough. It's a completely different kind of dough of its own. So we're gonna start just combining this together. I love a pastry cutter. If you don't have one, I'd say go get one. They're great and they make keeping your bench cleaner. Uh, it keeps your surfaces cleaner and it keeps you from getting your hands so sticky. But don't worry about getting the dough on your hands. It's gonna all come off. It's not a big deal. It's, in the beginning, it's gonna be sticky. You're gonna see how it's gonna stick to my hands, but then it's gonna come together and it's gonna be easier to deal with. It's gonna be easier to work with. So just keep combining it. It's gonna be a really rough dough in the beginning. So you just wanna work with it and get it all off your fingers and just get it into a ball. All right, let's start working on kneading this dough. It's a little bit like kneading bread. I also like to turn it underneath itself uh, like I do pizza dough. So you can do that and just keep turning it under underneath itself and then you can knead it as well. So we're just gonna do kneading and turning and just moving it around and getting those those glutens to start to start working. Okay, once we've got our dough ready, it's gotten smooth, it feels better, it's, it's kind of come together. We want to put some olive oil on this dough and then we're going to store it in an airtight container for about an hour. You can leave it for an hour or however many hours you need if you're working on your sauce maybe. Just leave it in the container, it won't dry out. And it needs to at least set for about an hour, I'd say. Okay, let's get our dough out now. It's sat for about an hour. And I'm gonna cut it into about four sections because we're gonna turn each of these sections into a strip that is going to end up being our pasta. It's gonna be a strip of pasta dough that's gonna be our pasta. So I wanna start rolling these out into long rectangle shapes and uh, just do it with a, a rolling pin. And once I have it flat enough, then I can start using my pasta machine. Now I invested in this later. I used to only roll it out and then I would roll it into rolls and cut it. But now I have a pasta machine because it does help with time on this. It does take a lot less time to roll it using the pasta machine than it does to roll out by hand. 
I roll it to a certain point and then I put it in my pasta machine and then this machine can get it, you know, paper thin. So the old Italian saying is, your dough should be thin enough to read a love letter through it. So we want to get it really thin. All right, once we get it thin enough, now we want to go ahead and start cutting it. Now, again, if you don't have this pasta machine, you can use a knife, roll it into a roll and cut it with a knife. It works really well. The pasta looks a little more rustic, but if you have a pasta machine, this definitely works really well. You get these gorgeous, beautiful linguine noodles and they're all even, it looks great. Once you let it dry for a little while, then when it's time to eat, take your pasta out the rack and let it ready to cook it. You cook it like you would any other sort of regular pasta and let it cook for probably four to six minutes with this handmade pasta. Now I wanna go ahead and I wanna get my big pot of bolognese and I want to put it in a smaller pan because we're gonna actually cook the pasta and this bolognese together. So I'm gonna take some of that out, get it into a hot pan. Okay, now I'm gonna add my cooked pasta to my heated bolognese. And we want to combine this. This is gonna help the pasta take up the flavor of the sauce. And this is the way that she recommended to do it. So I'm gonna follow what her recommendations were to try to get the best flavor. So let's combine it. And then I want you to make sure you reserve some of that pasta water because you wanna add some of that to it as well. You wanna kinda of loosen up that sauce so that it has more liquid for the pasta to absorb. So add some of that pasta water. All right, now here's the magical part. We're gonna add a cup and a half to two cups of Parmesan or I really like Pecorino. Pecorino has a way stronger flavor and it just kicks the dish up a notch. So, you know, it's up to you, but I really like the pecorino. So I added two cups of pecorino to this and then just combine it. And it is turning into pure heaven at this point, believe me. All right, it's time to plate. Let's plate it up. The pasta is super tender. I like to add some balsamic and then more pecorino on top and then serve it with a crunchy bread. So let's see what Chad thinks. I hope you guys give this recipe a try. Let me know if you do, and then let me know what you think in the comments below. I spent a lot of time cooking this today. I'm curious about what you think about homemade bolognese with fresh homemade pasta. Can we try it? The house smells amazing all day. Oh my God. This can't beat that fresh pasta. I oh know, fresh handmade pasta. Delicious. It just melts in your mouth. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Cooper wants to try it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have any. Yep, so good.